Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I thought that I would share with you guys some of my best tips for like studying maths, understanding maths, doing maths exams, and just generally how to like get better at maths. Because as someone who's dedicated literally way too much of my life doing this, and I feel like also as someone who is not naturally good at maths, I feel like I have like advice to share with you guys on this. Also for the past like three or four years um, I've done tutoring so I've like tutored so many different ages, so many different abilities with like lots of their different goals and it's been really enjoyable. Yeah I thought that I would share with you guys 10 of my best tips on how to just get better at the subject. So I've split it into five kind of just like general tips for improving maths and also in all of this delightful season that we're currently in exam season my final five tips are dedicated to like kind of doing maths exams so um my best advice for people who are like preparing for like gcses a level uni exams whatever you guys are doing so the more like exam side of things so yeah i really hope that you guys enjoy find this useful and without further ado let's get on with the first tip I feel like most people know like the best way to like get better at maths is to just do like loads of practice questions but I would advise when doing practice questions you need to like build up your understanding by starting always doing practice questions that like match your current ability. I personally find it really easy to give up when doing maths questions. When I look open a question, yeah, have no idea what to do. I'm not motivated to try and figure out an answer. Um, and just find it really easy to like give up and like go watch Netflix. So if that sounds like you, then I think the you need to like drop the level of question that you're doing so you have an idea and that idea will give you motivation to carry on. So for example, um, if you're doing A level, there were like textbooks that basically had way too many questions for you to like realistically get through before your exam. So pick and choose kind of the questions that would be most useful to you at this time. For example, if you're feeling like really confident with the material, there are like the exam style questions at the end, or there are also sites like Physics and Maths Tutor, um, or you can do like full practice papers. Uh, but if you're feeling like not confident, then the questions like at the start, um, they kind of like, if you're doing integration, for example, there are like these integration questions at the start that are like much more accessible if you're not feeling confident on that topic. So you can just do like the first like 10 kind of like um, in question one, um, part A to like G, which will just really help you like wrap your head around integration, um, like whichever specific part of integration you're doing. And then you will feel much more motivated to do it. And you'll also have like more confidence as well. This is one of the mistakes that I made when doing math questions. Um, which is give yourself enough time to think before checking the solution. Before when I was like practicing questions that like were much too hard for my current ability, um, when I give up, I would then like immediately go and like read the solutions. When I like read the solutions, it's really easy to be like, oh yeah, like I probably would have thought of that anyway. Like you should treat your maths brain as like kind of like a muscle. Like the more you just give up and like read the solutions, I feel like you're kind of losing the strength to be able to do it yourself. So drop the level of difficulty, which means that you should realistically have more of a chance to figure it out. And if not, at least like have a solution written down on what you think that it could be before you check the solutions. And for me, if I'm like doing a question and I find that I just have no idea what to do, I usually like leave it and then come back to it. And if I still don't know it the second time, then I'll check the solution then. But then I find that like the biggest difference is if I've like properly thought about it. When I read the solution, it's a lot more like, oh yeah, instead of like, what? Even after I've read it. So throughout my many, many years of studying maths, I have been such a loyal user of Brilliant, who very kindly sponsored today's video. Brilliant is where you learn by doing and they have thousands of interactive lessons in maths, data analysis, programming and AI. So personally I've used Brilliant's courses when I was preparing for Olympiads. The learning platform is extremely effective and they have like a really first principles approach that really helps you understand from like ground up. So one of the courses that I did most recently is in data analysis which was predicting with probability. I found that it was like very accessible to like 
learners of any level so you don't need to worry about that and it also just like gives you another way of thinking like it really helped me to like visualize like large data sets so if you guys are interested then you can try brilliant for free for a full 30 days and um, by visiting this link or clicking on the link in my description box down below you'll also get 20 percent off an annual premium subscription okay so number three is with maths especially i feel like shortcuts always catch up with you so I remember when I was like doing other subjects, for example, I remember like for some of the other subjects, I feel like if there's like this section of the course that you don't really understand, but just cram, it's much more like separated. I feel like what makes maths like really hard is the fact that everything is so like joined together. I'm someone who kind of writes off a lot of material and I only kind of revise what I need to revise. Some subjects like history, for example, like I could not know anything about like the Battle of Hastings from year seven, but when I'm revising like the Tudors in year 11 for GCSEs, um, it wouldn't really affect my understanding at all, which in that respect makes maths very hard because everything that you're learning throughout the whole of secondary school is kind of building up. So if like your foundations for like fractions for example isn't that good then it catches up with you because like you could be doing you could get like the really hard part correct like you could be doing like the quotient rule and stuff correct but then you like do the fraction bit wrong at the end and that like makes your answer wrong if there are certain topics that you are not confident with pick them out and just like practice a bunch on it because i know before that like i've had things that i really didn't want to get asked about and like i've had like weaknesses that i thought i could like get away with and i have been able to for other subjects but every time for maths like my weakness always gets exposed and then i get trapped so yeah don't leave any corners exposed for maths like if you feel like you have a weakness and you know what the weakness is try and like overcome it as soon as possible if for example your teacher isn't very good or you're reading a section of the textbook and it's just not making any sense there are so many resources online like watch a different explanation instead of just like going over the same thing over and over again like i remember before when i was looking at like my linear algebra lecture notes in first year I would just like read this section, have no idea what's going on and then read it like again and again and again and then I'd like give up because I'd be like oh I don't understand it's not my fault like I'm just not smart enough to get it but then um now if I have like a section that I don't understand I'll like look it up using either like another uni lecture notes or there are like loads of free videos online available on YouTube I used to like convince myself that it would just be a waste of time because like the notation is going to be like all different or like it's not going to directly match up with my syllabus it will overall save you time because the time that it would take you just like getting annoyed about it and reading the same thing over and over again and not understanding um even if the notation is slightly different then it's still worth it in my opinion number five is something that i had from my tutors at oxford actually and it's like never underestimate your like subconscious um brain because for me, sometimes I do feel like like quality is obviously important with revision, but the more I've like revised and the more I've gone through exam season, I've realized that it is sometimes like a quantity thing as well. Like I would sometimes read through my lecture notes, have like no idea what's going on, but then if I come back and do it a second time, it is like much better. And even though sometimes like I, when I do it the first time, I'm like, that was like a complete waste of time because I just like spent a whole day doing that and I have no idea what's going on still. My, like, I have no idea what's going on. You did take more in than you probably thought. And when you come back to it a second time, it will be a lot better so for me the structure that i usually do it is like i go through my notes like roughly the first time so i just like for example like look at the definitions i really understand the definitions and then i'll go back and do the proofs like which is more intense kind of after that i remember like the advice that my tutor gave in first year is that you need to leave time for your subconscious to do the problem sheet questions which means your conscious needs to um start well in advance so that you have time for your subconscious to do the questions okay so moving on to the more exam technique side of things my biggest biggest tip is don't do past papers until you understand the material this is the biggest trap that i fell in last year because i kind of like 
did past papers whilst like not really getting the material which meant that I was like looking up the answers and then I would do it a second time once I understood the material like very near the exam which gave me a false sense of security because I kind of convinced myself like yeah you don't remember anyway but really like I do remember the answers if I look at it you only get to see it the first time once make sure you cover all of the material first and do the past papers properly you can get through lots of the past papers um in like a short space of time once you properly understand the material and that way you'll get much more out of that paper than you would if you are kind of doing it all like simultaneously my second tip is one that i also shared in a short a while ago which was very popular and lots of people said that it was useful which was the tip that my tutor shared with us in back in first year which was to revise especially if you're doing like applied maths at uni or any kind of like routine exams like gcse or a level where the questions are pretty structured in terms of like the numbers and stuff would change but like what you need to do pretty much stays the same with like that style of question so you basically like go through the material um go through the worked examples and kind of write yourself like a little recipe of the things that you're going to do so um earlier this week i was teaching reverse chain rule for integration and we went through and like figured out like a really good structure and then after that like she didn't get it wrong at all and i think that topic's like really tricky so when you have this type of question um step one step two step three and then like you can just follow the recipe after that and it also really helps you kind of like work through something that's pretty hefty um and then like figure out the bare bones of the worked example okay so this one is very exam technique -y. so when you have a question in maths most of the time all of the information that they provide will be used in your solution so i always go through when i'm doing a paper go through with like a highlighter and highlight any parts that would be useful um so if they tell you that a certain angle is a right angle but don't put it in the diagram for example things like that that are useful and easily missed and i also go through with like a black pen or a pencil and cross out anything that's not useful so if they write like an essay at the start being like oh like johnny um is concerned about like the sale price and stuff like that bit's useless so separate any useful information from not useful information i also advise my students to check thoroughly if they used all of the information in the question especially with exams like gcse a levels they will very rarely i would in be inclined to say never give you any information that you don't need so if there's like something that they gave you that you didn't use i probably check your solution so lots of people have asked me before like how i got full marks in gcse maths and i would say it just basically comes down to checking so i could probably do a whole video on like how i check maths but essentially if you have time use the calculator as much as you can and check like everything on there um even if it's something that requires you to solve by hand check it with the calculator and also if you have the option to if you know how to check with a different method than the one that you did the question so if the question asked you for the sale price start with the sale price that you worked out and then work your way back to the original price for example if you can't think of like another way to do the question or think of another way to check the second best thing is cover up your original solution and do it again because when you're looking through a solution you're always like yeah 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 that's fine um, because you kind of read what you want to read um, instead of what's actually there so cover it up and do it again from scratch if you have time and my final tip is to always 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 practice past papers under time pressure because so much of maths is down to time pressure and i feel like most candidates probably could do better given more time so it's okay at the start when you're like not as confident with the material it's normal for your processing time to be like slower than towards the end when you're kind of like you've practiced more and stuff but just even if you're not going to follow like the two hours um, exactly just make a note of like how much time you spent on this question um, otherwise it kind of gives you like a full sense of security i know with oxford applied papers in particular given enough time i feel like lots of people could like get full marks but it's just like it's a lot of algebra to crunch through in like half an hour or however long you have to do that section so yeah just even if you're not going to follow it directly at the start 
always be aware of time. Okay, so I really hope that that was useful. Um, let me know if you want to see any more kind of advice videos and if so, what you want to see. Good luck with any exams and yeah, I'll see you guys very soon. Bye.